two more examples of utilizing direct proofs with integers. This time we're going to take a look at two examples of perfect squares. So we have for all integers x, 5 quantity x squared plus 1 minus 4x squared plus x quantity minus 1 is a perfect square. First thing we do, we define our variables. Now this is going to be an easy one because there's only one variable to define, x, and it's an integer. And there is nothing else we can do with that. So let's let x be an element of the integers. Okay? And we're going to say such that x is arbitrary but particular. And there's nothing else we can do. There's no even, there's no odd, there's no perfect square. Okay, so we're doing this right here and that's it. Now we're gonna go through and verify the conclusion. All right, so there is no substitution because we, we don't have a definition for X. So we could say that five quantity X squared plus one minus four X squared plus X minus one is gonna be equal to 5x squared plus 5. So all we're doing is we're just going through and just distributing minus 4x squared minus 4 minus 1. Okay, and that's by distribution. So just some basic algebra. We're going to combine some like terms. So notice that we have 5 and negative 4, which is an x squared. And then we have, um, this should be minus 4x. Sorry, that's a copy error. So minus 4x. And then we have five minus one, which is going to be four, all right? And that's just by adding polynomials, right? or we could just say combining like terms. Um, and then what do we have here? Well, x squared minus four x plus four is factorable. So we can write it one of two ways. Um, if you're sharp enough to see that it's going to be x minus 2 squared, that's fine, but you might need to just do this first. So you might need to write it as x minus 2, x minus 2 by polynomial factoring. Right? But you could just go ahead and skip down to this if you can see it right away that this is x minus 2 squared, again, by factoring. And then finally, we know that x minus 2 is a polynomial. and Furthermore, x is an integer, so integer minus integer is equal to another integer. So we're going to say this is equal to k, quantity square, right? Um, where k is an integer. Um, and if you really wanted to, you could say that k is equal to x minus 2 if you chose to, and that's by integer closure. And what have we shown? Well, we've shown that 5x squared plus 1 minus four x squared plus x minus one is indeed a perfect square because this is the very definition of a perfect square, okay? So we can say hence by above, we can say that five quantity x squared plus one minus four, um, sorry about that, I have to erase this. minus four quantity x squared plus x minus one is equal to k squared, and k squared is a perfect square, which is a perfect square. And why is a perfect square? Because it fits the definition of perfect square. So by definition of perfect square. Right. And then hence, for all x in integer domain, we can say that 5 quantity x squared plus 1 minus 4 quantity x squared plus x minus 1 is a perfect square. All right, so that closes out our proof. One last example. Um, and this one just says that if a and b are perfect squares, then AB is a perfect square. All right, so this one's got a little bit more to the definition, okay? So remember last time um, we just said that X was an integer. Well, now it's an integer such that it's a perfect square, okay? So let's let A and B be elements of the integers, okay? 
such that, because it says that they have to be perfect squares, okay, such that A and B are perfect squares. And I'll also put in brackets that A and B are arbitrary but particular. Okay. Now remember, that means that A and B have definitions because they are perfect squares. So by definition of perfect square, we can say that A is equal to some integer square. So let's call it M square. And let's say B is equal to the square of another integer. Let's call it N. And we have to make sure that M and N are properly defined as integers. So we're going to say M comma N are elements of the integers. All right, so now this is key. If we don't have that definition, then we can't do any further. Now we're going to prove the conclusion. So by substitution, A, B is going to be equal to M square, N square. Well, that's pretty easy to see. Right? And again, we're just trying to verify the conclusion of this um, conditional statement. This is the same as M, N quantity square. Right? So this is, again, is the power of the product rule. Um, but you could just say exponent rules. And then finally, we know that m is an integer, n is an integer. So the product of two integers is indeed an integer. So we're going to call that k. So that's going to be equal to k squared. Now k has to be defined as an integer. Otherwise, it's meaningless, because then we can't use the, the, um, the conclusion correctly. Um, and we're going to say that's by integer closure. And if you really wanted to, you could say that k is equal to mn, right? Um, if for some reason that needed to be stated, I'll put it in brackets. All right. And what have we shown? We've shown that ab is equal to k squared. And k squared is the very definition of, an, of a um, perfect square. All right. So let's close this out. Just give myself some room here. And we're going to say, hence, so we can say, hence, A, B is equal to K square, which is a perfect square. By definition of perfect square. All right, and we're done. So we can say thus, for all a comma b in the integers, if a, b are perfect squares, then a, b is a perfect square. And so what are we saying? We're saying that if we have two perfect squares, their product is a perfect square, right? Um, for instance, four times nine. Four and nine are perfect squares. That means that 36 is a perfect square. So four is two times two or two square. Um, nine is three square. So this is six square. Um, if I had something like 100 times four, that's equal to 400. So this is 10 square. This is two square. This is 20 square. And you guys can see that each time you just multiply the bases and that gives you what we're left over with. All right. So pretty cool that we were able to do that um, to show that the product of two perfect squares is always a perfect square. All right. So that takes care of all the integer stuff. The next video we're going to start taking a look at is rationals. So we're going to define what a rational number is.
And then from there, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do some proofs as to um, how to verify or refute any sort of direct proofs involving rational numbers.